We know what they did. They basically copied nature, as with so many great inventions. What they were doing was they were looking at these ants, which are capable of navigating in the desert hundreds of meters uh, to find food and then coming back to exactly the same spot. And they do so, they believe, using polarized light and counting their footsteps. And so to test out that theory, they developed this robot. But not only to test that theory, they also wanted to develop a system which can navigate autonomously without GPS. That's extremely interesting if you want to have a another layer of technology for things like autonomous cars but also there are plenty of military applications and there was some military funding into this research actually from the CNRS in, in, in France and uh, the technology the, I was just talking to the scientists and he said it worked a lot better than they thought it was going to the accuracy is down to one centimeter over 15 meters so it can't go very far but they believe it's a very good low-cost new level of totally autonomous navigation using light and they believe it can work in the dark as well and that's the next step is to try and make it work in the dark and when it's raining as well. Well, incredible stuff. Well, let's turn to YouTube now. And uh, the video sharing site has actually been held responsible uh, for a rise in the number of people who believe the Earth is flat. Uh, what's the connection there, Yes, if you, if you look at the um, Google trends, you can see that searches for flat Earth have actually shot up in the last few years. In 2016, there was a massive spike, another one in 2018. And um, what this researcher from Texas Tech University believes is, is that people who go to these conferences are basically getting all of their information from YouTube. She didn't actually point the, the finger of blame directly on YouTube, but basically said that they could do more in, in order to encourage people to go to more reputable sources. We actually reached out to YouTube about it, and that's, they said that's exactly what they're trying to do now, is to bring in um, different uh, sources of information for people who've started to look at conspiratorial information, perhaps, and maybe led down a particular rabbit hole that they're going to try and bring them back to more reputable sources of information from big news channels like ours for example in order to kind of give a, a bit more balance out there um, so YouTube say they're on top of it but it's interesting research apparently yeah this massive spike is basically people have just made one one search and then followed it off and gone off into all kinds of crazy ideas well let's go from Earth uh, up to space or flat Earth yes. up to space and uh, engineers uh, have developed a new space hub Harpoon, haven't they? That, that could actually kind of be shot at and capture space debris. Uh, yes, they tested it out, and if you look at the the, the video that they they took in space, it's it's fantastic. They've got this thing the size of a, a large pencil. Um, it's a research coming from Airbus and University of Surrey in, in the UK, and they they shot out their little harpoon in space, and they hit their kind of mock piece of debris. It actually broke off, which they weren't quite expecting, but they did catch it exactly how they wanted to. Um, the the harpoon goes through and then kind of grabs hold of the piece of aluminium. The idea with this mission is to test out different technologies. So in September last year, they threw a net around a small piece of space junk which they'd pushed away from their satellite. Um, they're also going to use uh, later next month a, a kind of solar sailed device to kind of bring themselves down to Earth. They basically think that they need to tackle space debris actively and that this is one of the technologies you can use in order to capture bits of wayward space junk.